Right here's another Hamfest find. Uh, this box here is a 16 channel video distribution amplifier, uh, mainly used in video surveillance and security systems. Uh, it gives me 16 channels of single video in and four channels out. Uh, it can also be configured to be a single channel in with eight uh, channels out. It's basically a unity gain buffer uh, to distribute out to multiple video monitors. Now again, I got it at a bargain price, and my sole intention was to harvest the BNC connectors out of it. So, but before we do that, I figured we'd uh, take a quick look at it, maybe open it up, and we'll also see if it works. Now most RF systems that use BNC connectors are 50 ohm impedance, while most video systems that use the BNCs are 75 ohm. Now there are some physical differences between the two, most notably with the insulator material around the center conductor. Uh, with the 75 ohm, oftentimes it's a smaller diameter or sometimes non-existent at all and you'll just have the center contact kind of floating uh, with an air insulator around it. However, the mating surfaces, the mating uh, features of these connectors are identical. There's a very common misconception that intermating a, a 50 ohm plug with a 75 ohm a receptacle or vice versa can either cause damage to the center uh, female connector or can uh, cause intermittent contact between uh, the center conductor on the plug and the receptacle. And I think this stems from the fact that on the plug itself, and when you're assembling them, the pin that's in there has got the same diameter on the mating surface here, but has a uh, different diameter on the crimping or soldering surface back here where the center pin of the coax is connected. Uh, but all the manufacturer's data sheets that I've looked at from folks like Huber and Sooner and Amphenol and other well-respected uh, uh, RF connector manufacturers all indicate that the center pin diameter is the same and can mate uh, equally well into 75 ohm or 50 ohm plugs. Now of course there still will be an impedance mismatch between the two even if they mate properly. Uh, now when you get up into you know several hundred megahertz or a few gigahertz that mismatch might start causing issues, but I, my use for BNC connectors typically are small little projects that I'll build here on the bench, and the frequencies are generally, you know, HF frequencies or below. And when we consider the duration of the impedance discontinuity is some small subset of the length of this connector, that distance is really, really small with respect to the wavelength of the signals that I'm passing through them. So the effect of that discontinuity is minimal. So I think I'm perfectly fine harvesting these connectors for my little HF projects here on the bench. Now uh, hooking up power to the unit and applying an input signal from my signal generator and taking a look at the output of one of the channels, looks like I get uh, a decent signal through here. So I want to do a quick check uh, to see if the bandwidth is what the datasheet says. The datasheet says we should have a, a 16 megahertz 3 dB bandwidth. So what I did is I adjusted the signal generator to give me a 1 volt peak to peak output out of the output here. And um, I'll simply adjust the frequency until that amplitude reduces down to about 0.7 volts. That'll be about the 3 dB point. So if we start rolling that frequency up here, we can see the uh, amplitude coming down. And uh, we get up to about, uh, let's see, Looks like right about here, that's uh, 19 megahertz. We're down to about uh, 710, 712 uh, millivolts peak to peak. So it looks like we, uh, you know, easily meet or even slightly exceed the rated 16 megahertz bandwidth for this unit. Now off camera, I did verify that literally every single one of these channels works. So it's starting to make me feel a little guilty that I bought it simply to tear it apart and rip the uh, BNC connectors out of it, but. Let's take a look and see what we're dealing with inside, and maybe we'll decide uh, we might change our mind, who knows. Now, a quick glance at this circuit, uh, we can actually see that there are eight identical sub-circuits kind of arranged here on the board. So let's take a closer look at one of them and see what we're dealing with. Well, all eight of these sub-circuits are identical, with the exception of the one at the very end, and the only real difference is there's a, uh, a full-wave rectifier and extra filter cap at this end, which is uh, the power comes in here, and the power can either be you know, 12 volts AC, which would get rectified here uh, and then sent off to all the sub-circuits, or you could put in 15 volts DC, and that would just pass through the bridge. So if you ignore that, the rest of these circuits are identical. 
And the circuit actually is pretty simple. There's a bunch of uh, you know electrolytic capacitors in here, and there's really just two ICs. This is a uh, a little 12 volt regulator chip, and then this is our amplifier. If I get the light to kind of shine on here right, we might be able to see that it's an EL. Uh, 1508 CMZ uh, and uh, that is actually a uh, a pretty nice little driver chip. Let's take a quick look at the specs for that. So this EL1508 is a differential DSL line driver uh, 450 milliamp uh, output drive capability and with the right power supplies can actually drive uh, over 43 volts uh, peak to peak differential into a 100 ohm differential load. Um, so certainly it uh, can be used in uh, 50 ohm or 75 ohm systems with that kind of drive capability. So it looks like a pretty decent chip. Uh, and certainly can understand why they chose it to use it here. If we look at the way this thing was designed, there's actually two circuit boards in here. The board down at the bottom uh, simply houses all of the uh, connectors. And there's a row of uh, board to board edge connectors uh, along the edge here that connects this top board with all the electronics on it down to the board on the bottom with all of the BNC connectors. Well, the fact that uh, every one of the channels on this thing works with uh, about 20 megahertz worth of bandwidth uh, for unity gain starts to make me rethink a little bit about my you know, decision just to rip all the BNC connectors out of this thing and toss it. So uh, one interesting application would be as a reference distribution amplifier. Uh, many of the pieces of test equipment here, like the signal generators, the scope, and uh, spectrum analyzer, have the ability to accept a 10 megahertz reference input. Now, by using something like a, a GPS-disciplined reference oscillator or rubidium oscillator, uh, I could use that as a master reference for most of the equipment here in the lab, using this as a distribution amplifier to send that 10 megahertz reference to all of the equipment, making it all locked together and making some measurements more accurately. So, uh, so now I'm a little bit of a quandary. You know, do I want to rip this thing apart, or do I want to use it uh, for that type of application? Now, of course, I don't have anywhere near this number of pieces of test equipment here, and the fact that. Uh, the circuit is so symmetric. I could literally, you know, probably cut the board right here and give myself, you know, two, four, six, you know, six channels with each of these uh, kind of buffered outputs uh, to uh, send the reference off to, you know, lots of different pieces of equipment and still have myself a lot of BNC connectors to stick in the drawer for future projects. So anyway, let me ask you, what would you do? Would you uh, use it as it is? and uh, just kind of leave the unused channels unused? Uh, would you just uh, kind of stick to your guns and rip all the BNC connectors out of it and, uh, and toss the rest of it? Or would you uh, maybe hack a piece of this off and use a bunch of the distribution channels for an application in the lab and then with the rest of them take all the BNC connectors and use them for projects and then possibly even harvest uh, this buffered chip for some other projects as well. Anyway, just uh, some interesting things to think about. Thought you might enjoy seeing this other ham fest find here. And again, comments are always welcome. Thanks again for watching.